Hey, Job chapter 40. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, and Job hasn't said anything yet. What God's doing, he's been answering Job all along. Shall he that contended with the Almighty instruct him? You got a problem against God? You got a problem with what God says? You got a problem with what God does? You got a problem with what God is? Are you going to instruct you don't even believe. You don't even care. You don't have anything to do with. He that reproveth God. Let him answer it. So Job has been condemned, condemning. And Job has been reproving. Then Job answered the Lord and said. Oh okay here's Job. Behold I am vile. What shall I answer thee God? I will lay my hand upon my mind. I ain't going to say a word. Look at Job. Look at Job put on the spot. Oh, if the Lord would give me time, I will answer him. I will defend myself to the Lord. Okay, Job, your turn. I won't say nothing. I'm not going to say nothing. And remember, Job is right with the Lord. He's just. And a lot of worldly Christians and Christians who do what they want to do say, they're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ, and there's Jesus. You're not going to say nothing. Now, Jesus said, as far as the lost man at the great white throne judgment, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we done this in your name? Have we done? God's going to give them a chance because they're just so bold against God, what we read. They contend with God. They reprove God. God, look what we've done, Jesus. Hey, listen, let me tell you something. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. When it comes down to the Christian at the judgment seat of Christ, that's our Savior, that's our God, that's our all in all, no matter what we thought. Wood, hay, or stubble, gold, precious stone, or silver. The lost man, I think God's going to give him a chance. Because he doesn't know any better. Once I have spoken, Job said, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Job said, I ain't saying one word to you, God. I might get myself in more trouble. Then he answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind. God is still speaking. There's that whirlwind before Job, his three friends, and Elihu. I don't know if it's moving around. I don't know if it's stationary. But here is a whirlwind. And it is talking to Job. That's a miracle. Gird up thy loins now like a man. Come on, you want to be a man? Gird him up like a man. I will demand of thee, Job. I'm demanding you, Job, and declare thou unto me. Job, answer me. Tell me. Wilt thou, Job, also dis disannul my judgment? Wilt thou, Job, condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? And men do that. Men will say... God, you're mean, you kill all these people, and you've done all this wicked work. Israel did it in the wilderness, it was ripening and complaining. People change the Bible, people have another Bible, people have another holy book. They have tradition to disannul God because, you know, if I give my church money, they'll pray for me, and I'll get out of my sin, and God won't judge me. If I go to this person other than Jesus, if I go to somebody else besides the mediator, the Bible said, well, I'm going to be absolved of my sins and God can't touch me. That's called religion. And God will not approve of it. And yet people are going to be, okay, God, yeah, take care of me. You know, my religion, take care of me. Whatever I believe in, you know, there's no God. There is the big bag or there is no God. There's, there's science and education. And they're going to find out they're wrong. That happens today. Hast thou, Job, an arm like God? Can thou thunder with a voice like him, God? Come on, Job. What's your voice sound like to God? When God spoke in Exodus 20 to the children of Israel, they feared. To Moses, you stand between us. Don't let us, because God, that voice is going to kill us. How you doing, Job? All right, Job, you're a judge, all right, but... Do you have the excellency we're going to read about right now that God has? When people come before they, are they going to just only speak the truth and no lie at all? 
deck thyself now with majesty and excellency and array thyself, Job, with glory and beauty. That's what God is. God is majesty, excellency, glory, and pure beauty. Come on, Job, do it. And I don't mean do it with mascara. I don't mean do it with oil. I don't mean just make yourself. Now, the Bible says about Jesus, there's no beauty that we should desire. That's the unsaved man. There's another place in the Bible that says, we shall see the king in his beauty. We're going to have a God that has beauty, and it's not going to be artificial. It's going to be all pure, and it's not going to be caked on and printed on or painted on. And when you got these Christian churches painting faces and all that, that defiles what God really is. God doesn't do that. We will have and we will see God in majesty, excellency, glory, and beauty one day. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath. Angry? Send it off. Send your wrath out, Job. And behold, everyone that is pride and abase it. Okay, Mr. Judge, find all the pride people and put them down. Pride go before the destruction. A healthy spirit before a fall. Okay, Job? Take everyone that's pride and bring them down. God's going to do that one day for the Christian wood, hay, or stubble. Every proud Christian, whoever they are, wood, hay, or stubble. Every proud lost man off into the lake of fire that burns forever. Come on, Job, do it. Job, do you know who's prideful and do you know who's not prideful? Have you charged someone with pride and they don't have pride? Have you found someone not to be prideful and to be proud? Find them, Job. Come on. This is the power of God. God knows all our sins. How you doing, Job? Look on everyone that is proud. Everyone. And bring him low. Come on, judge. That man's proud. Put him in the dirt. And tread down the wicked in their place. Come on, come on, Mr. Judge. You help the widow. All right, every wicked, wicked man, put him down. Put him in the dirt. God does that. God will do that. You know, oh, I know this man. He's wicked and vile. He's lived his whole entire life. And yet, he's going to stand before God one day. And if he's lost in the great white throne judgment, he may be able to stand up to God and say, God, you this, you got this, you this, God, and all that. And God's like, okay, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's, that's a humbling experience. When the Bible says every knee shall bow down and confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. A lost man will do that. Hide them in the dust together, the, the proud, and bind their faces in secret. Don't tell anybody what you're doing. You know, there are people today, from the time of man of Adam and Eve to today, God has taken man and he has privately, for some men, he's broken them down. And nobody knows. And they might have been broken down to repentance. Or they may have been broken down to condemnation. And some people, they don't even know what happened. Stuff happens to us in our lives. We don't know why God's doing it. Some people may think they know, but we don't know. Even the people involved don't even know. Come on, Job, do it in secret. Work on that man in his life or work on that woman in his life, Job. And they have no idea what you're doing, but for the honor and glory of God. Do it, Job. That's what that's what God's been doing to Job all along. Job doesn't know why he's been he's been attacked. And yet it's to God's glory by the time we finish the book. Then will I, God, also confess unto thee that thy own right hand can save thee. All right. You think you can save yourself? You think your words can save you? You pick up verse 6 all the way down to 13. When you can get rid of God's judgment by your judgment. When you can override what God has said in judgment. When you can condemn God and you're righteous still. I got my religion. That's better than God. Okay, if you can get a religion that God will approve of. You will get a woman that can intercede instead of Jesus Christ. You can get that. Okay, God said, okay, wait a minute. And if you got an arm like God and you can come up with a mighty voice like God has thunder. If you can do that, Joe. 
or any man. And if you can deck yourself with majesty and excellency and you can have glory and beauty and you can spread your wrath out and you can take the proud people and you can abase them and you can take the proud people and you can bring them low and you put the wicked in their place then God will confess to you you're saved and you get to go to glory. And when we get to heaven we'll all worship you. There's two men in the Bible that are righteous that no man can match outside of Jesus Christ. Job. Job is one of them self-righteous and righteous men that did right, honestly. And that rich, that rich young ruler that came to Jesus. Jesus says, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt honor the Father, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear falsehood. He says, listen, Jesus, I've done it all. Jesus did not rebuke him. But like Job, he had a sin. He was covetousness of riches and gold. Job was self-righteous. If we can declare ourselves as Jesus Christ, innocent and sinless by our own perfection, that we are righteousness in our own merit without Jesus Christ, then God said, okay, you're saved. Go to glory and we'll worship you. That ain't going to happen. And if you can get a lost man comes up to you, oh, I'm good. I got my church. I'm baptized. I go to church. I give money. I do this. Can you outmatch what God does? Now, we just read in the previous chapter 39, God feeds all the animals. How do you do it? Well, I have a bird bath. I have a bird. That's not all the animal. Well, I gave money to feed, you know, children over in this nation that are starving. That's not all the children. And every man, there's a little bit of pride. Bring yourself down. We all have pride. Bring yourself down. We will do things or not do things because of our pride. That's a sin. God will not confess to you that you can save your own soul. Behold now. Okay, verse 15 to 24 is interesting. My footnote says it's an elephant. Some say a hippopotamus. Some say a crocodile. Let's look at this un- Biblical truth that men teach in the Bible, footnote. Then we'll look at who it is. Behold now, behemoth, which I, God, made with thee. God's creator, God made this animal. He eateth grass as an ox. Okay, an elephant can eat grass. If it's a crocodile, I don't think crocodiles eat grass. Blow down. His strength is in his loins, his middle part of his body. His force is in the navel of his belly. I don't know about an elephant. I mean, elephant, his force is in his head, in his, his, his trunk, in his husk. He moveth his tail like a cedar. Uh, you ever seen an elephant's tail? And I'm going by what the, what the note says. This says elephant. The elephant's got a kind of flimsy kind of little tail there. I mean, there are animals that have tails that reach all the way up to your head to get rid of the flies. You don't even have a tail to be big enough like that. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. The, the, the muscles and, and, and the fragments of his body, they're, they're, they're together, they're twined, they're solid. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. Uh, I don't think that's an elephant. His bones are like bars of iron. I don't think that's an elephant. And he said God created him. It says in Ezekiel 28, thou art the anointed cherubim that was created. He's the chief ways of all God. Yet the elephant is worshipped in India, but that, that elephant is not going to tell you about God. Welcome to the, Mr. Elephant, tell me about God. <laughs> I don't understand that. Stop speaking tongues to me. Tell me, Mr. Elephant. An elephant, as my Bible says, I've seen crocodile, I've seen hippopotamus. They know the chief ways of God. You can't even find elephant in the Bible outside of this note. He, God, that made him, can make his sword to approach onto him. See, I wonder what that sword is. Sharp edged sword that can pierce the thunder joints and marrow. We just read about the joints. We just read about the bones. 
Hebrews 4.12. The sword went against this creature when Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And when he attacked the devil, he used the sword, the word. Surely the mountains bring forth his food. Where all the beasts of the field play. He lieth under the shady tree in the cover of the reed and fen. So when the sower went out, and the first thing that comes up, there were birds. And Jesus tells that those birds are a type of the devil. And then when you read the parables of Jesus, that here's this big tree, and in the tree is a bunch of birds, devils. Scripture with scripture. But there's no scripture when you change the Bible. The shady trees cover him with their shadow. The willows of the brook can pass him about. Verse 23, we're going to look at, we're going to look at in a moment, but 23 is the key for this behemoth. Behold, he drinketh up a river. That's a huge appetite. And hasteth not. He's not in a rush. He trusts that he can draw up Jordan in his mouth. Wow, he's got some good bladder. He takes it with his eyes. His nose pierces through snare, trap. Uh, you ever see the nose of an elephant? He can move the trap. Now we got to go to Revelation chapter 12. About this elephant that's in my Bible. Revelation chapter 12. And we'll get the context with scripture. Where Bible scholar it's. Idiots don't get it because they don't know their Bible. And we'll pick up verse 3, chapter 12, Revelation, yet to be future and yet right now. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. Must be a hippopotamus. Can't have dragon. The Chinese can have dragon. But the Bible can't have dragon and the Bible can't have unicorn. Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, fallen angels, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now verses 1 and 2 tells us that woman is Jewish. Israel. Here is a being who wants to eat a Jewish piece of flesh, human body. And yet there's a religion out there that says we eat Jesus. That would be a Jewish body. That would be an account of this dragon that we're reading about right now. <laughs> I don't eat the flesh of Jesus Christ. I eat a piece of wafer that represents the bread and blood. It is not the body. Here is someone who wants to eat a Jewish body. I wonder who that could be. And she brought forth her brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And a woman Israel fled into the wilderness where she would have the place prepared of God, that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score days, forty two months. How many chapters are in Job? Uh-oh. That's the tribulation period. And there's war in heaven. That's interesting. Intergalactic war in the Bible. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. This is an interesting dragon. Kind of weird elephant. And prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. For the elephant. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Oh, the old serpent. That's Genesis 3. That's the one that talked to Eve. What's he called? He's called the devil and Satan. That's no elephant in Job chapter 41. That's the devil and Satan. We'll see in a moment. Which deceiveth the whole world. Got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world. Not Jesus. 
is the devil. He was cast into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice say in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren, the devil, is cast down, which accurses them before our God day and night, like Job 1 and 2. You see what Job is? Oh, look at that. We're reading right along with the book of Job. When we get to heaven as Christians, we're going to see Michael kick the devil out of heaven. We're going to watch that. It's going to be interesting. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's me. And by the word of his testimony. And they loved not their lives to death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. That's going to be Christians, angels. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and of the seal of the devil. Has come down unto you, having a great wrath. He's angry, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. And the woman, and when the dragon saw that he was cast out into the earth, he persecuted the woman Israel, which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness. Jesus would pray that your flight be not in the winter. Unto her place, probably Celebrita, where she is nourished for a time, one, times two, three, and half a time, three and a half years. Tribulation. From the face of the serpent, or the elephant, if you read the next verse, with Job. And the serpent, the serpent, the dragon, the devil, Satan, cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. That he might cause her to be carried away in a the flood. There's that elephant drinking all the water. But it's not an elephant. It's a dragon. It's not a dragon. It's an, it's an old serpent. It's not an old serpent. It's the devil. Chasing after Israel in Job chapter 40. There it is. Scripture with scripture. That's not an elephant or whatever your Bible says for a note that the, the men wrote. God gave you what it was in Revelation chapter 12. Scripture with scripture. Study to show thyself to prove unto God a workman that needs to be, uh, need not to be shamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. That matches Job 